welcome again to my lab so today I have a very nice deck in my lab it's a Kai 715D it has a JX hat which means glass crystal X is a ferrite crystals and after all those years like 41 year you can see yourself the head is still looks like new Akai when designing this head promises that this head can last 140,000 hours so imagine uh, how long it may last so uh, I spent around 100 hours with this deck uh, I replaced it uh, Capstan motor, uh, all capacitors on the power supply board and control board, all faulty 450 transistors on the control board are deoxidized it and fine tuned it. And now I can may tell that what I mentioned from the very beginning when I started to work with this deck, it do has a very bright recording. Like uh, you can even like hear smallest uh, scene when like large orchestra is playing like uh, small bells or like pretty teeny sounds. And I was pretty interested how they did it because this deck has been designed uh, far before the uh, current modern standard has been uh, approached and like uh, used by all the companies. So the guys did a pretty interesting thing. This deck has a nonlinear frequency response, what I will prove right now. So it changes so significantly. I measure up to eight decibel difference when it goes over frequencies. So that's why I currently set it up on minus 20 decibels. Uh, unfortunately, this deck is not capable to give zero decibels, so it's been tuned to give minus four decibels on the output. And this means that when we are working on the minus 10 range, it will show minus four. But I will switch back to minus 10 decibel, so it currently shows minus 14, just to show you how ridiculously uh, large change in the frequency response on this deck. So we currently play in 400 Hz, and we, we start in recording and with this recording I will be changing frequencies so it's a two head deck so we cannot record and play at the same time so I will go through the frequencies so 500, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 so we have a thousand, two thousand, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And rolling back. Sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, now we will be playing recording. And you will see how different it is. So now it plays 400 Hz, you see it's pretty stable, going up to 1 kHz. One kilohertz, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
15, 16, 17. You see, so it's capable to record and play 15 kilohertz on type 1, but uh, on the range you may see it's around like uh, 4 plus 4, like 8 decibel jump in the frequency response. That's how it works. I also would like to show you how good is the azimuth on this deck, in spite of the two head. So we are written like one kilohertz. Now we'll quickly switch to 10 kilohertz. So it's 10. And let's go to 15. So that's the source. We had one. 10 and 15 kilohertz and now I will rewind back so it's on 1 kilohertz 10 a little bit fluctuating and 15 Yeah, this tape <laughs> is not capable to handle. I use a different tape, it was much better. But that's two tape heads, two heads tape decks, and that's not much you can do about it. So thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed. Now you know why this decks from 70s sound so bright and nice. Specifically, they record even brighter. So like. That's how it works. Thank you. Bye-bye.